I apologize if this video goes a bit long, but there's a lot to talk about with this one. Hello and welcome to Low Fidelity, an independent music review show for everyone. My name is Connor Klang, and I like music. Do you like music? Let's talk about some music. Daft Punk are, without a doubt, one of the most influential electronic music groups of all time, and at every step in their career, they've entirely changed the game of how electronic music works. From Homework's simple riffs and funky bass lines, to Discovery's futuristic new disco, to Human After All's distorted feelings of emptiness, like everything they've done has influenced a, a bunch of people. DJs across the world wouldn't have massive tours and flashy light shows if Daft Punk hadn't originally played in front of a giant LED pyramid, and Dead Mouse wouldn't be wearing a robot helmet if they hadn't started wearing robot helmets themselves. Part of Daft Punk's massive success has come from how great they are at maintaining their image. Their robot helmets don't just obscure their identity, but also make them superstars to a level that just two normal guys wouldn't be, because you have this great mystery of who are the people behind these robot masks. But underneath that, their music is still incredibly strong. Homework is a minimalistic and awesome dance party, and Discovery sounds like what would happen if you took pure liquid fun and turned it into music and then just put that music on a CD. And Alive 2007 was a really pioneering electronic live album that people hadn't really seen before, in which Daft Punk mixed together all of their previous hits into something that's greater than the sum of its parts, and it's, it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing work. Also, there's Human After All. Human After All wasn't very good, but recently there hadn't been as much Daft Punk in the world. They hadn't made a proper studio album since 2005, and they hadn't made a good one since 2001. And though they did do the soundtrack to Tron Legacy, it was just kind of... Not, not, it wasn't Daft Punk. It wasn't like a Daft Punk album. Which is why when the band announced their latest album, Random Access Memories, it got more hype than anything that I've ever heard before. Partly because of their brilliant advertising campaign, part of which involved showing 15 second snippets of songs in the middle of ad breaks on Saturday Night Live, and making a video series online in which they had all of their star-studded cast of collaborators just talk about how this album was going to be the most amazing thing ever. And the number of people Daft Punk collaborate with on this album is amazing. From experimental music legend Panda Bear, known for his work with Animal Collective and his own amazing solo work, there's Julian Casablancas, Garage Rock King, an occasional synth dabbler, known for his work with The Strokes, there's Pharrell Williams, producer, singer, rapper, and general renaissance man, there's Niall Rogers, producer extraordinaire and rhythm guitarist for so many different things. There's Giorgio Moroder, synthesizer pioneer and disco legend, and also they work with the guy who wrote The Rainbow Connection for The Muppets. Yeah, he shows up too. And Daft Punk were making this album in a unique way from their other work too, with almost no electronics involved. Instead, they hired real studio musicians and actually made songs with musicians. And I was more hyped for this album than I have been for anything in the history of the world, because everything anyone was saying about it was that it was going to be amazing and change music and give life back to a saturated electronic dance thing and make everyone immediately start making great thriller-esque albums and the world would suddenly explode in a rainbow of happiness and magic and music. And then Random Access Memories came out. And... Uh, uh, if I had to describe Random Access Memories in one word, it would be polarizing. If I had to describe it in one word and it didn't have to be a real word, it would be hittinous. Hitten. Hittinous. I knew going in that this album wouldn't be an electronic dance album like Daft Punk's previous ones, but it isn't even really a dance album. It has more in common with soft rock and other 70s and 80s music than it does with anything dancey. If anything, it's like a compilation of 70s and 80s music that kind of spans every genre that was popular at the time. Don't get me wrong, this is a very well done album. It's well thought out, it has a bunch of songs that I really, really love, but there are a lot of points in it that fall flat. Dash Funk are known for singing in robotic vocoder voices, and that's all over this album. And in some places it works really well when it's being used to, like, push along a track with a singer. For instance, the two Pharrell Williams songs have, like, Daft Punk vocoder background sounds that really drive the song along and make it better. But robotic-sounding vocoder voices are good when you're chanting things or singing repetitive riffs or whatever. But when you're using them to sing, like, an adult contemporary love song... It's really cheesy and weird and bad. Songs like Within and Beyond, and especially The Game of Love, sound way too cheesy and kind of throw off the momentum of the album, especially since so many of them happen really quickly, like right in the beginning of the album. So the opening track, Give Life Back to Music, chimes in, and it's this really nice song that really, like, gets you excited about what's going to be on the album, and then you hear The Game of Love, and it's 
it's kind of a slog to get through, and that kind of soured my view on the album as a whole. And there are songs like Instant Crush, which has Julian Casablancas of The Strokes, who has this amazing distinctive singing voice, and has him singing a really nice melody with really great lyrics that are maybe the best lyrics on the album, but then, like, crushes his voice in autotune, so it doesn't sound anything like him. And it's frustrating, because there are a bunch of points in this album where Daft Punk gets it entirely right. For instance, Giorgio by Marauder has the famed disco producer Giorgio Marauder narrate about his life and about his relationship to music over this, like, pounding 80s synthesizer-fueled beat that eventually just turns into a musical journey that spans as many different styles of music as possible, and it's an amazing, well-produced ride that's unlike anything I've ever heard before. And Touch sounds like the show-stopping number of the Daft Punk musical, and it has so many different varied sounds in it as well that really makes it more of a musical journey than a song, and I really dig both of those. The last track, Contact, samples audio from an Apollo mission that makes it sound like aliens are coming, and then that turns into heavy drums and heavy synthesizers, and in the end it has this like weird, unnatural drone sound that just makes the album end in, on this spectacular note. If you've heard anything from this album, it's Get Lucky, the disco-themed single and poppiest moment on the album. And I really like that song, too. I appreciate it a lot. I, I, think, I think it's great. Pharrell Williams, the vocalist on that song, also sings on a different song, Lose Yourself to Dance. And I appreciate that song, but I find it a little bit funny, because it's maybe the least subtle thing Daft Punk has ever done. And Daft Punk are not known for their subtlety. It's, it's very clear what the song is about, to the point that it's kind of, like, unsettling. Overall, Random Access Memories has some really standout, amazing tracks. It has some songs that stand with some of the best that Daft Punk have ever done. But it also has a lot of filler and weirdness. And that's a shame, because the album is mixed really well, too. Everything sounds phenomenal. Everything sounds clear and crisp. It's maybe the best-sounding album I've heard ever, or at least in a long time. It's clear that Daft Punk put a lot of time and thought and money into this album, and all of those things show. But at a lot of points, the songwriting isn't quite as good to cover that. There are points where it sounds like Daft Punk's most bland, lifeless album to date, which is weird considering it's the album that's supposed to give life back into music. Speaking of which, can anyone explain why Daft Punk are suddenly calling all electronic dance music soulless and saying that the only way to have music with real life in it is to get live instruments? Because I can show Daft Punk an album that uses electronic instruments and doesn't sound soulless at all. It's called Discovery, and it's by a little band called Daft Punk. Why, why did they go from making some of the best electronic music ever to saying that electronic music is inherently worthless? I don't get that. That's just one of the many conflicting ideas about this album. I feel like everyone's going to have their own different opinions on it. Mine is that it's very hit or miss, but when it hits, it's really amazing. Is it the album of the year? No. Is it worth all the hype Daft Punk put into it? No. Is it even Daft Punk's best album? No. But it is a really solid album with a bunch of really standout, amazing songs, and I appreciate it for that, if not for being as good as they said it would be. Random Access Memories, I'd say, is worth a listen, but don't be as hyped up for it as I was, because it's, it's gonna disappoint that much hype. Every album would disappoint that much hype. That's my opinion on Random Access Memories. If you have a different one, and I know you do, because everyone's going to have a different opinion on this album, just let me know in the comments, and then maybe we can have a discussion about this. That'd be nice, because this is the kind of album you can have a discussion about. And in any case, take care.